Welcome to Daron Yoga, everyone. Hopefully, welcome back because you've already been following us and you've seen the video on how to do bridge pose. And now you want to see how to do the full Urdhva Danyurasana. Urdhva Danyurasana, upward bow pose. Many times it's called as wheel pose, but really wheel is a different pose. Chakrasana, we flip over. The upward bow, you can call it wheel, is a lovely pose which is normally considered a backbend. It's done in every Ashtanga class as part of the closing sequence. It's done in most vinyasa classes, in the Yengar, etc., etc. Almost everybody does it. Even kids do it without knowing what yoga is. It's such a helpful, beautiful pose to help us balance this forward folding we're doing all day to open up. The thing with it is that people think it's a back bend, and though it really helps us extend and even hyper extend the back, it really is very much of a psoas opener and requires open hips, open psoas, as much as shoulders. And so the beauty of this pose is that it really opens everything, requires you to be open on many different levels. So it also means that you have to have patience, really have patience. We have already a video that describes the three most efficient shoulder openers. Please practice that regularly. That's one of the best ways to be able to come into this pose. But whether you're half new to this pose or been practicing this for a while, I think it's really great. We'll show you ways to both do the pose really correctly and sustainably, answering all those classic debates, whether feet should be apart or in, etc., and also give you some tricks how can you work towards it with blocks on the wall so that you can actually manifest it even if you don't have a lot of help right now and you're stuck in the middle level? And this is because the biggest problem in this pose is it's usually bridge, which is nothing compared to this pose, or this pose, and there's not a lot of in-between. We will give you that in-between secret. So here we go. We're going to go right away into it. We'll start with showing you quickly the bridge pose just to understand the back and how that works before we go for the full pose. So Kasha is going to lay down on her back. Knees are bent. And so basic alignment, and this is, again, changes sometimes. Feet are about hip width apart. If you go a little wider, it's not the end of the world. What you're looking for is not to turn the toes too far out because this will eventually cause you to squeeze your glutes to pinch a little bit in the lower back. So the most important thing is try to keep the feet somewhat parallel. And as this pose is difficult, many of us, when we reach up, we then open the feet. So once you're up, try to realign your feet. Knees, some people say keep them all the way together, no need. Some people tell you to squeeze a block. That's a really great practice to get that awareness. Again, the main thing is don't let them splay open. Keep them hopefully in line with the feet. And so if it's too much, you can take the feet a bit wider apart, but not too far wide. The lower back, what happens is obviously we can bend. And so we can now play with the tailbone for a second. There's two ways to move them, right? There's the curved and the non-curved, lordosis and kyphosis. And when the hips are turning right now, Kasha's moving the tailbone towards me, there's no way I can move the hand under. She's flat on the ground. This is great because this creates length in the spine, especially in L4-5, in the lower lumbar spine, in the lumbar spine, lumbar number four and five. However, if she curves the spine, which is very much what sometimes feels intuitive to do, I can take my hand all the way under. But if we start this way, it means we're going right into the lower back and not creating space, not using the full back. And as you go deeper and deeper, you don't want to rely only on L4-5. You want to try to expand it to the rest of the back, shoulders, and legs. So, of course, most of the bend is from the lower back, but we want to do it safely and sustainably. So we're going to start with the lower back tucked under, hips towards me, starting to lift the hips a bit. And really, the hips are lifting a bit, the knees are pulling forward towards me. This ensures that the tailbone is moving towards me. Kasha is not lifting up to her max, just part way. And this is to make sure that there's still 
length, as you can see, plenty length in the lower back. From here, before she keeps going higher, she's going to bring the hands under the back and clasp the fingers. Rolling a bit the shoulders under, wow, gave so much more opening in the chest area, in the heart space area, and gives space for the neck so that C7, the cervical spine, is not pressing onto the ground. Now that there's on one hand movement towards the chest, on the other hand movement towards the knees, the tailbone, she can go and lift up as high as she wants. Woohoo! And because we've created the space in L4-5, as we go deeper, we have a rainbow healthy backbend versus if we were just going right into the backbend, it would be a pyramid, a pinching, not so good and definitely not sustainable. Kasha, from here, we'll lower down for a moment and take a quick break. Even if you have an easy, full Urdhva Danyurasana, practice this, get this, master this, because what happens? What's the difference between this and the full one? Are you writing me a comment? Okay, okay, I'll tell you. It's the shoulders. We're adding the hands now, and the shoulders, which are very limiting for many of us, will be compromising of the back if we don't have this one right. So here we go. We're going to try and take it to the full pose. So starting again with the lower back, right? We're going to move a bit the hands so you can see flattening the lower back, right? It pulls the belly in. It moves the tailbone forward towards the heels. Keeping that right now. We'll let it go later, but for now, try to keep it that way as you begin to lift the hips, making sure that the knees, the feet do not change, the knees do not change. Once we have that, we're not going to take the hands, we're just going to roll the shoulders a bit under to lift the chest, and then hips a bit higher, and then now the hands are by the ears. Now what happens here is this already is very challenging for a lot of people, and there is a problem keeping the elbows in towards each other. So we're looking to keep the elbows in, and if that's not working for you, you can cheat a bit and turn the hands a bit outwardly, meaning the pinky goes sideways. Don't go too much. You don't want to hurt your wrist, but enough to keep the elbows in. Pressing the hands strongly, the hips come up, the elbows maybe go a bit out, and then I can feel how Kasha right now is really working on bringing them in. Why is that so important? Because this means that between the shoulder blades, there's space. There's no pinching. So we want the shoulder blades a bit away from each other, wrapping here. So the elbows go this way. The arms may be straight, may be part straight. Legs are straightening as much as possible, hips up. There's still a bit of a feeling of the tailbone going towards the heels, right? The head relaxes down. So come on down. We lower down, bring the chin up towards the chest, and then come down. What many people do is they lower down to the head, which is fine, and then all the way down. But don't lower down towards the head by just collapsing. I like to bring the chin in. So if you do fall for some reason, you fall on your shoulders, not on your head and neck. Okay? In between, I recommend taking knees from side to side. This releases the back, but it doesn't put you into a forward fold. And since we're going to continue with the back bends, not too many, let's not go too far. Okay? So I'll show you in a moment a few other versions. Let's look at this one more time a bit faster. Feet parallel, knees parallel, tucking the tailbone under, hips come up. Hands by the ears, and this part again showing you holding the elbows in, pressing the hands. The elbows will go a bit to the side, but then realign in, and then hips up, chest moves in one direction, the legs are pressing strong. This is the full upward bow, Urdhva Danyurasana, coming down slowly. Again, chin up, lowering down to the shoulders, resting for a second. I'll show you a variation right now where you can only do this with a, hopefully a qualified teacher that knows how to do it, and it's called the ankle assist. And it's lovely. The only problem for the teacher is once you have a lot of students feeling what it feels like, they're like, hey, hey, me, 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 and you only have one set of ankles. Well, at least I do. Maybe you have a few more in the closet. The thing with the ankle assist, it's really super duper helpful for students that can come up, 
If you can't come up off your head, forget it. Just don't go there now. Work on opening the shoulders and doing other stuff. But if you can come up, but you cannot straighten your arms, your arms are halfway straight, this will give you the opportunity to straighten the arms and make it to that next step, to that next level up, okay? So as a teacher, I'm coming. Watch out if your student has long hair. It's very common to step on their hair, so really making sure you're not. My feet are by the ears. Kasha's got her legs ready. She's holding my ankles, and she's got it in a way where the thumb is on one side, the finger is on the other, so there is no sliding, right? You don't want to have everything on one side. You may slide. As the teacher, I'm just keeping some space between the shoulder blades, gently holding her elbows in, and when Kasha is ready, she's going to come up. I'm gently assisting her there. Really, she's doing most of the work. I'm barely helping here nudge her towards me and keeping space between the shoulder blade. But this really gives, woof, look at that, straight arms and much, much deeper back bend. And if Kasha had a struggle, this would have felt like night and day. We're going to slowly come down. I'm going to bend my knees and support her as she comes down. I'm using my bandhas to protect my back. Thank you. Okay. So let's say you want to try this with me, by all means, come down to Guatemala. I'm at Lake Atitlan. Whether you come to a retreat or a teacher training, I promise I'll help you with this. It's worth it. But now you're stuck in quarantine and you're like, Dora and I really want to do this. How do I prepare before I come down to visit you? Oh, I've got the secret. It's called the block assist. Are you ready? Stay tuned. Okay, so the blocks. Here's how you set them up, right? There's two ways. Um, you can have them like this lengthwise. I think Kasha usually prefers them turning sideways. The reason is when it's turned sideways, it's a little lower, so a little less support, but more stable and safety. And so you can do it that way or this way. Make sure that they have about a 45 degree angle. And if they're rubbery, they will stay on the wall. You'll be fine. I mean, even if they fell, you're fine, but that normally doesn't happen. Okay, so you can see here, they're like leaning on the wall, they're down here. And this is kind of like holding the ankles, right? So you keep space between the two blocks enough so that you or your student goes down and lays down on their back with the head in between the blocks. The head is in between the blocks, the hands come on to the blocks, and the hands will be in the same position as you do in the upward bow. You place it, fingers facing down, this removes a lot of pressure. So even if you've got an easy practice, some people just for wrist sake, it's useful. We work on keeping the elbows in. The rest is the same. Feet parallel, knees parallel, lifting the hips while moving the tailbone a bit towards the heels. And then a one, two, three, pressing up. And as we press up, you can see even Kasha that had it super easy has her arms more straight, legs are straight. This is powerful. You can stay here or do exactly what Kasha is doing, press the legs, and this creates more straightening of the leg, more opening in the chest and back as she moves closer to the wall. This is intense, so careful, and then slowly making your way down, okay? All the way down and rest, okay? So this is really a fabulous way to practice if you are midway up, like you're already up, but you can't straighten the arms. This really gives that extra space to open up and to really open up the chest. Like I said, I highly recommend before you do this pose, we do it almost in every class, do a low lunge to open your psoas. Really do yourself a favor, do that for a while. Do some shoulder stretches, anything that opens you this way, this way, really to kind of get all this open, warm up the spine, and then practice this. Okay, so now we have the Urdhva Danyurasana. We have the full version. We have it from bridge, and we have it supported with ankles or with blocks. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Thank you, Kasha. Um, let us know, what do you think? Is this like, wow, dude, this is amazing. We love this block thing. What do you, it's nonsense. What do you think? Do you love it so much that you want to share it with five people? Please do. And I know you already subscribed, but if you forgot, hit the like, really subscribe so you can get more from us. We love sharing. Thank you so much.
Namaste.